mean, I've always had that adrenaline rush. I mean, I kind of have an addictive personality and I, I just go all in on everything. The, the adrenaline rush is, is where it was at. I've always wanted to race. I didn't really have any money growing up, so it wasn't really in the cards for our family. So we just made our own fun, you know, in the fields and kind of got wild on our own. It's just seeing what happens on Harleys. I mean, seeing these guys wheelie them and dragging knees and all that stuff, I mean, it got me really excited and into the performance side of things. I always thought Harleys for, were for the old guys, you know, and, and the ape hangers and all that. And then, you know, you see Seabear dragging hand and it's like, all right, <laughs> that looks cool. I think I can get into that, so. Hey y'all, I'm Cody Melton. I'm number 11 racing in the Bagger Racing League for the lightweight twins and pro stock bagger class. So we grew up in Lavernia. So we had, my parents had land and we used to ride dirt bikes out there basically. My uncle gave us a dirt bike when I was five and just, just love riding ever since. I first got on a street bike only about six years ago and I got a Harley. It was a Sportster 72 and I put bags on it and traveled all across the country. We did uh, 50,000 miles in about four years. Um, sold that and uh, ended up building a race bike for uh, BRL. Um, I kind of got into it from Jiffy Tune and Tony Shreds and those guys over in California. Um, they were doing a track day, and so I went out to Chuck Walla and hit a track day with them and kind of just was all in after that. Uh, went home and bought a 97 Sportster, broke it all down, and built it up. So for the Sportster 72 that I had, um, it was set up with bags and a fairing um, and mostly for travel and stuff. Uh, very comfortable ride, um, higher bars, uh, about shoulder height. You, if you start going fast enough, you really start to drag things, even if you, you think your suspension is good. Um, so building a track bike, you really got to take that into consideration and just really I mean, I got 16 inch shocks on the back now versus 14, which most people think 14 is pretty high. And then you go 16 and it's really high. Um, and then, you know, uh, the tail section is lifted another four inches and there's just a lot of it. You have rear sets and stuff that you put on the race bike and different things like that, that kind of set it apart from being a, a regular street bike. Basically, I mean, I've always had that adrenaline rush. I mean, I kind of have an addictive personality and I, I just go all in on everything. Um, so, I mean, with dirt bikes and stuff, I just, yeah, the, the adrenaline rush is, is where it was at. I've always wanted to race. I didn't really have any money growing up. So uh, it wasn't really in the cards for our family. Um, so we just made our own fun, you know, in the fields and kind of got wild on our own. I mean, I guess just seeing what happens on Harleys. I mean, seeing these guys wheelie them and dragging knees and all that stuff, I mean, it got me really excited and into the performance side of things. Um, so, I mean, that's that's basically it. I found the niche in that. I always thought Harleys for, were for the old guys, you know, and, and the ape hangers and all that. And then, you know, you see Seabear dragging hand and it's like, all right, <laughs> that looks cool. I think I can get into that. Last year was my first year with the BRL. Um, we hit all the races, all four um, locations, and we did okay. We placed uh, fourth, fourth, sixth, and fourth um, in each race, um, but we showed up for every race and we ended up with first for the season. So um, 
I'm sitting right now as the BRL lightweight champion. Um, and we'll see what happens next year. There's some fast guys for sure. So honestly, I think the biggest thing is showing up. Um, that's the hardest part, you know, juggling between the job and the sponsors and getting the bike ready and practice and the wife and kids and all that stuff. That's the hardest part. So showing up is definitely, um, it's, it's what, what it takes to win. Um, aside from that, you know, you got to put in the work on the track. You seat time is, is where it is. These guys are not slow. So if you're, you know, not, uh, putting in the work, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be in the top. Um, so I think, I think a lot of it is just, yeah, really just <laughs> showing up. And if I learned anything from last year, you know, um, and just, just making sure the bike's ready. Cause you get there and it's not, you know, you run a couple practice sessions and your lever breaks or snap a cable or something like that. So I think that's the, the biggest part and biggest takeaway is just being prepared, showing up to the races and ready to, ready to play ball. So riding on the track, I mean, we all think we're fast, right? You know, we're riding hot rods, you know, they're basically Harley hot rods and you soup them up, you throw your cams in it, you got your mid controls on, high bars, let's go. And you think you're pushing it and then you go to the track and those guys are fast. Um, it's just another totally different world. I mean, the braking, the, the surface that you have on the road, the tires you're using, all of that is just, you, an average guy cannot keep up with the racers that are on the track. So if you build it right and you, you know, you get your bike set up for sure. I mean, look at Steve Chamberlain and those guys, you know, I'm just an average Joe. I just wanted to build a bike and have some fun and did all right. So it's doable, but uh, it's definitely a different world going from the street to the track. So, so doing the lightweight twins was so much fun. I mean, there's there's a lot of great guys in there. Dylan, um, Greg in California, um, just really fast dudes. Brandon Quaid, um, but I think pushing it to the next level is is where the baggers are at. You've you've got Steve Chamberlain, Arnie Wells, Clay Braun, Ravi's moving up. Um, Josh Nichols will be in there. I mean, there's tons of great people that are going into this bagger class and. I had to do it, you know. Um, I sold the, that bike that I got 50,000 miles on um, and I got sold it for $10,000 and turned around and got this one for $10,000. So it was basically an even swap. Mama said it was cool and we signed the paperwork. <laughs> um, I had it about a week and a half. Um, I put about 100 miles on it just around, you know, the neighborhood and whatever um, and stripped it all down um, and then uh, as I was building it, uh, Chris Moose reached out and he wanted to have a hand in, in helping with some of the fabrication, building the pipe, um, fairing mount, um, a bunch of other stuff, rear sets, things like that. So uh, yeah, he's been a huge help in, in getting this thing going. We started with the 2017 Street Glide Police Edition. Um, we ended up stripping it all down and going with the Road Glide. Um, just the fairing being mounted to the frame, I think helps with some of the aerodynamics and being able to tuck behind it um, rather than the Street Glide. You know, you got a lot of movement on the bars and stuff. Um, after that, just getting the initial base of what we're gonna go with, it was just you know, lifting the bike up, making more clearance, uh, making sure we're not dragging pegs, things like that. That's the biggest thing is just get these things off the ground and, and in the air. Um, once you start leaning them over, you're gonna, you're gonna drag stuff, so. So on the front, we've got the Olin's inverted suspension. Uh, we just think the inverted on the front is much better handling. You get a, a little more uh, feel out of the front end. We went with 13 and a half rear shocks with three inch extensions, making it 16 and a half in the rear. So it's pretty tall. Um, the saddleman seat adds another three or four inches on top of a, a standard saddleman, which also sits a little bit tall. So um, I'm barely tiptoeing 
<laughs> just barely touching the ground. So right now it's a 107 with the cam. We're gonna do a 128 big bore kit. Uh, we got the HPI pipe and Moosecraft designed the headers uh, to fit right around the boosted brad mid controls, um, TTI pegs. It brings us up another inch and a half, two inches. So um, got some good ground clearance on on the pipe and on the on the pegs for sure. One of the best improvements we've made is the Lindahl brakes, 13 inch lug out rotors. Um, having big brakes is definitely key to get these things to slow down. Um, without that, I mean, you can blow a corner very easily. Um, brakes get hot, uh, you start getting brake fade and it could be a bad day. So having, having good brakes is definitely key. We did the 17 inch race wheels, uh, also done by Lindahl. Um, Picking the 17 inch wheels is definitely crucial so you can get good rubber. Street bike tires just don't have the same compound as these race tires do. Um, running slicks with tire warmers gives you so much more grip. I mean, it's night and day. There's no second guessing whether you're gonna slip out in a corner. I mean, you just push on the bar and it tips in and you go. There's no slipping out or gravel or any of that. I mean, you just hit it and gas it and you're good. We've got uh, an aluminum swing arm on there, still running the Lindahl sprocket uh, and chain kit, with spacers and stuff. The road glide fairing is completely gutted. Um, it's got an oil cooler mounted inside to keep the motor cool. I mean, these things are running super hot, so keeping it cool is, is key. For the cop theme, I mean, I think we just wanted to have a little fun with it. Um, I like a classic look on a Harley for sure. Um, something that's a little bit timeless um, that will you know, transcend a couple years. Um, so I think that was a, a big key in, in picking that. And then the Narc Glide, I think Moose came up with that one. I think he was the one that decided uh, that that would be a good fit and I thought it was hilarious. So we've still got some stickers to put on it. I wanna do a, uh, a donut on the uh, intake cover. So there's, there's a couple things we wanna do still. But. I think the goals for this year are just to make every race. Um, last year we made every BRL race and this year we want to do the same and try to hold the title for the lightweight twins. But we also are going to introduce the bagger and, and try to see where we, where we stack up there. Um, it's going to be new, get the motor work done and get the kinks worked out and learn the bike a little bit. Um, but once, once it's there, I think it'll be fine and we'll be able to hang with the best of them. So I will be doing Moto America uh, first round in Daytona. Um, it's March 9th through the 11th, um, so they're gonna let me run with the big dogs and we'll see if I can qualify it and if I can stay within, I think it's 113% of uh, the leader, then they'll let me race. So I'll be in dead last, but <laughs> we're trying. So if you're looking to catch some racing this season, um, be sure to follow me and keep an eye out for the races at uh, Daytona, Moto America, uh, BRL, Pittsburgh. Those are gonna be the first rounds. Um, keep an eye out, number 11, we'll be out there.